All right, everybody. Well, we're gonna do a do a pinion seal replacement today. I have never done one of these. We're gonna do it on our 87 Buick Grand National, but it is leaking profusely among other places. This has never been replaced, and I do remember it having, when we first got the car, I think it, it may have been replaced by the dealership. I don't know, but I can't remember, but this thing has been leaking. It's just getting worse and worse. It's been leaking for quite some time. I think the reason why it leaks really bad is because the car sat for so long, dad wouldn't drive it hardly at all. I'm gonna guess that's what it is, but, um, and it's 30 something years old, right? So this, this process is pretty much straightforward on any rear differential from your you know GM Ford and Chrysler. So we gotta remove the drive shaft. We've got to remove the yoke. And then obviously you gotta have the tools and before we move the yoke, I believe we gotta remove that big nut there. So let me show you what I got. See that big nut there, it's in the back. We'll show it to you once we get the drive shaft off. Everybody knows pretty much what that is. So let's go over here and check out the tools I got. So I went to Summit and I purchased off of Summit, it's a seal puller. And this, I'm pretty sure, works on time and chain covers and everything else, but looked pretty nice. Came with basically three different attachments, I guess, for the different size seals. But yeah, looks pretty nice, actually. It's obviously made out of aluminum, so we're gonna see how well it works. We got off of Amazon, this is the pinion yoke wrench tool. I'm sure most people know what this is. So you can see once we put this on, I think this might have been $30, I can't remember. Very inexpensive, but a multitude of different flanges, whatnot on your yokes. So this is gonna be interesting, seeing if we got enough impact and enough grunt <laughs> for me to hold this. And then here's our rear pinion right here. Now I'm really gonna hope that I've got the right puller tool to get this thing, to get the yoke off, but um, that's where we're at, and I'll make sure to lube this before we reinstall it. So, here we go. All right, we've got the drive shaft out. I'm gonna put some PB Blaster on here, just can't hurt. And then we're gonna see how our tool fits after we find out what socket we need. Well, that was easy. <laughs> Just an old electric impact, it came right off. Here's the nut. And if anybody needs to know, I believe it's an inch and a quarter socket on the GM. I think this is an 8.25 10 bolt rear end. You guys let me know, I, I could be very wrong. Okay, well that was easy. Uh, so I got, I didn't have a two legged puller, so I thought, well, just for the heck of it, I'm gonna try to set my three leg puller up. And I just, I just trying to set the thing up and this thing just popped right off. Didn't need a puller. It just slid right out. So herein lies my question. Is that, was that thing on there properly from the get-go? I mean, the nut, the nut was, um, the nut was not hard to take loose either. I don't know how many, seems okay. And this kind of concerns me. Um, you guys let me know, but <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and pull this. We're gonna go ahead and pull this seal. So I'm just in here trying to see which size, what, what piece I need, proper size piece to take this seal out. But when I did, just kind of, I didn't even put much force on it. This thing is moving around. I hope I have not created a problem here unsettling something in the backlash. <laughs> We're gonna find out. Guys, yeah, my little tool wasn't budging this thing, so I'm gonna have to collapse it on one side here. See if this thing will get it out. Um, it just wasn't going to budge it. There it comes, I believe. Yeah. Uh, all right, there it is. All right, that bearing just goes. Okay, so I see. That's what I was. Okay. So. Okay, so we're going to go over some deal and duds on both tools and parts. So I'm going to first. Go over parts. We got our factory seal out right here. Now, I ordered 
the tool, the seal puller tool from Summit. And I also ordered the pinion seal from Summit. Now you guys know when you order from Summit, you have the little check for fit button. So when I ordered this, I of course went to 1987 Buick Regal. They didn't have a Grand National drop down, but they did have for the seat for all G bodies. And I think this was the larger rear end. Um, I went to this one. So before I ordered it and put it in my cart, I went check for fit. It goes to year. I put 1987. It says which kind, you know, Chevrolet, um, Oldsmobile, Buick, click Buick. When I click Buick, then it mentioned Grand National. Yes, Grand, so, oh, okay, so this should fit. So, here's our, obviously, this is not the right seal from Summit that the check for fit box is probably some high schooler or something in there, or somebody that obviously just clicked, you know, oh yeah, it'll fit. So there you go, so that's, as far as dealer dub, this is from Summit, this is dud. And I'm not gonna go through and order start ordering from Summit and try to get lucky of, you know, something that'll fit. I'm just gonna have to order from Kerbin or a Buick place because it seems to me we're getting people that are that are loading things in and they don't have a clue what these cars are or what they had or the parts. So I'm very disappointed in this. We went through a wheel fiasco with Summit and I'm not gonna get into that. It's trying to get delivered to Joe they seem like they're complicating things. So here we go with the wrong seal, so that's good. All right, now, let's go to tools. I bought this from Summit, as you just heard earlier on the video. This is the Pro Seal Puller. This damn thing wasn't gonna budge and it's already bent. So, seal puller, maybe for something like really, really light duty, Briggs and Stratton, I don't know but it was already bending this right here. So this is a dud. So I say on ProSeal Puller, they have it on the Summit Tools section, dud. The only win today, as far as tools go, is this came from Amazon, and this is the flange, your stainless steel pinion yoke wrench tool. This was deal. And here it is from Summit, I mean, not, not from Summit, from Amazon. So, we're gonna have the car locked up here for another week and a half, I imagine, by the time that it takes to get the seal here from Kerbin or one of these other places. Going from Illinois to Oklahoma, and this is not Kerbin's fault, but our United States Postal Service, it took, I think, maybe a week and a half, almost two weeks to get the turbo hoses. Um, I probably could have driven up there and got them. So, I don't know why it takes a week and a half to go from Illinois to Oklahoma. But again, it took that many days to the United States Postal Service. So that's where we're at. The car is going to sit here on the, on the rack now for another, uh, another at least week. So that's it, folks. We'll try to con continue this once uh, somebody figures out what seal we need um, from some actual experts. Okay, so here's what you had to find something that was the same diameter. I have a ball joint toolkit for doing ball joints on several manufacturers. So I used one of the sleeves for the ball joints and then this is actually a, a Mopar torsion bar, um, or actually a Mopar ball joint tool. But it was just, anyway, you just need something flat to go up against this and made for a nice fit of just tapping it in there, use some up, hand, but I didn't bang on it. I just slowly went in with it. But obviously I'm gonna make sure I got grease here and don't forget that on any time you're doing a seal. So I'm gonna make sure I put some grease on the yoke here in a second. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure that I put some kind of lubricant. I just use my bearing um, lube to put on this journal from the yoke. And one thing else, something else you wanna make sure and do, this is gonna be all for naught if, if on this journal you got any kind of grooves. I don't know if you've ever seen them, if they had grooves on them or not, but it's possible. So this having hardly any miles, it, it should be in the shape that it's in, it's all good. but. Yeah, just make sure, like I said, ain't like a time and chain cover, same as a time and chain cover seal, same thing. Make sure you got this thing lubed up on the journal. Okay, we're putting our, we put our yoke back on and we're about to put our pinion nut back on. And per what I see, are all instructions that are in YouTube land and on the interweb there. 
You want to use red Loctite. That's what we've got, our Loctite 271. So I'm going to put that on. Get it started here. And this nut does have a, a locking feature because it's not quite perfectly round. You'll see where it's flattened on, on one of the parts of the shoulder. So once it gets down to that sleeve or that shoulder, it's going to start hanging and dragging as it's supposed to. So what I saw on <laughs> what a lot of guys are doing, they're using an impact and just tightening lightly a little bit at a time. So instead of doing that, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to start creeping up on it. Again, this rear end has never been apart, so it's already the crushed sleeve's already been crushed. So I know they say to just tighten it and move the pinion where it like that till it stops, and then you feel the clunking and you use the inch pound torque wrench. We're going to do that in a moment. But instead of using that impact and over crushing that crush sleeve further than it's already been crushed, I'm just going to do this by hand. That's just my look. I need to be as go slow as I can on this and just start easing in. So, okay, so I can't really feel the, yeah, I can't feel the pinion moving around clunking. So now what I want to do is I'm going to just kind of. I've seen where guys say 65 foot-pounds, but okay, now I'm going to listen here. Yeah, so maybe I need to do this. Okay, so I have 20 inch-pounds and it's not clicking. I know it said like 5 to 9 I can only get down to 20 with this, but when I did go and I can just barely, I don't hear, I hear just a little bit. I haven't over torqued it. And when I feel the pinion engaging the ring gear, I can just hear a little, I mean, yeah, the wheels literally try to, I just have to move it a little bit and it's moving the wheel. So I don't think I have, I, I just went by hand and I did not get hard on this thing at all. So I take taking my, with my tool, I'm taking my inch pound torque wrench here and it's not clicking. That's at 20 and it's moving, it's moving the rear end. So the pinion feels nice and engaged. It's, there's no flopping around at all. And I've got just a little bit of, mo I mean, very minor. And I can hear it just barely clunking on the ring gear. When I say clunk, I mean just barely like a click. So all that seems to be good. I'd say it's probably pretty close to 65 foot pound, but I can't, uh, my arm's not calibrated, but did use the Loctite. When I used my inch pound torque wrench on this, it seems like, but I did have a little bit more leverage on it. So I'm gonna take these off and I'm gonna hook the, the 20 pound inch pound up directly to the pinion. Okay, I'm working with what I have, guys and gals, but this goes down to 20 inch pounds and it's not triggering 20 inch pounds on the little torque wrench. Does if I hold it, obviously, but no. I mean, it's turning the wheels and so this is close as I can get it. I don't think I've over torqued it, obviously, if 20 inch pounds. I, I think, I know it called, I think, for five to 10, which is half, but this is close as I can get it. So we've got it locked tied down. I cleaned the threads up really good and went by hand, just like it seemed like everybody does. It's people using really half inch drive <laughs> impacts. I, I just didn't do that. I wanted to do it by hand and creep up on as slow as I could. So again, it's got just enough. Yeah, just barely enough uh, backlash here, I think, to be where we needed to be. So we're going to roll with it. So just before I put the drive shaft back in, just to make sure, I'm going to refill this diff up with fluid. I'm going to put our of course, our additive in here for the um, posi traction for the little clutches and everything that's in there. But let's go ahead and fill this up, and make sure we don't get any big leaks or anything. So, 
we're gonna go ahead and use what we had left on what we did Kevin's dart. This is the Amsoil rear diff fluid oil. It already has the additives that's needed for a posse traction rear end or a limited slip rear end. So I'm gonna use what's left in this bag and then I'll tear into this bag. Okay, so there it is. It's in, the yoke is back on. We got the pinion nut in. Now let me, let me go ahead and say what I wanna say on this video and this project. Do not follow exactly what I did because there's not enough. I have a 75% confidence level that, that that nut is properly seated the pinion. I don't have a five inch pound torque wrench, unfortunately. Mine only goes down to 20. I was doing valve bodies with it on transmissions. So using the 20 inch um, torque wrench, 20 inch pound torque wrench down to the lowest level, I definitely could turn the wheels, uh, even fighting against the drums, um, which the drums probably have a little bit of drag. Yeah, I think they have some drag. It would not trigger 20 inch pounds when I went to go turn that pinion. I did just like actually a one of the videos, TR, a TRQ video, whoever TRQ is, but looks like they overhaul and refurbish differentials. So I snuck up, we didn't even use an, an impact like they did. I snuck on it up on it by hand by trying to move the pinion around. And you know, once you know, you feel that that, I guess it's a tape, I'm sure it's probably a taper bearing and it's against a crush sleeve in there. So once that was solid and I couldn't move it around, just kind of gave it a little, extra there and of course we use the red loctite i'm confident that we're probably okay but for everybody else's cars and rides on this eight and a half differential you know if something happens to it i'm gonna i'm gonna show it on a video that i made the mistake and then i'm gonna be paying the price to have the rear end fixed but i don't i don't think we're gonna be there so that's the conclusion um my first pinion seal replacement on a rear diff, and I know all rear ends are different, but I'm gonna make the assumption that a Dana is probably similar. Um, it's the same type of design. Of course, the, the 12 bolt is similar, GM. Ford nine inch is probably a little, little different, but that's it. That's It's not leaking, I can tell you that. So far, I need to drive it, but we've, we've filled it back up. This thing was leaking horribly bad. So, that's it folks. Hope everybody has a great day. Well, as you can see, that first attempt was a failure. Yay, yay. So, you look up here, you see we're still leaking pretty darn good. So here's what I think that I did wrong. Let me put my pig down so we don't, we get to step in all this great hypoid. I think when I put the seal in, I went too far um, because I think that the seal is, uh, when I put the seal in, I installed it beyond where it engages with the pilot on the yoke. So here we go again. Luckily I have another seal. Okay, I'm a total dumbass. I, obviously I drove this thing in too far. Um, because the seal wasn't engaging with, I call it the pilot, with the, the surface on the, on the yoke. So this is a total amateur failure on my part. So you guys and gals, um, you're doing a pinion seal replacement, don't just tap it all the way in there till it stops. This is totally my fault, totally rookie mistake. I should have looked at that and and seeing as it wasn't gonna ride where it needs to ride. So, pin, or seal number two, here we go. Okay, rinse and repeat. So the new seal is in. I just got it up to the very edge of where the shoulder is just flush with the, with the housing. I should have done that the first time. I can't believe I was that stupid, but I didn't go back showing. I just repeated the process of when I put the the yoke back on, tightening the nut. Of course I used Loctite, but I tightened it where the where I felt where the yoke needed to be, where I could feel the backlash on the pinion. 
with the uh, I think uh, actually at 20 inch pounds um, I did this is what I did I, I went back and I didn't like the feel of the backlash so I went in and actually first time I, I did 65 foot pounds I don't believe that's gonna change the crush on the sleeve it's probably a lot more than that before maybe it did like I said I, I don't want anybody really th this would not be the expert obviously because the mistakes I've made so don't do what I've done the only thing I'm gonna be able to do is share with you if something starts going bad and south I pray that it doesn't but it does I will definitely share with everybody the mistakes that I've made but the backlash was I mean it was felt perfect um, it does have some back the little just a little bit so um, I think we're good so hopefully we're gonna go get some some more gear oil and put in this thing and we're gonna see what it does see if it leaks okay in summary this is where we're at we've got the got everything buttoned back up just filled the differential up with our I think it was 7590 gear oil it's mixed in there with my am soil and with all the additives so so far so good time will tell but I think this time we're gonna be okay I'm gonna say one thing I noticed on this thing when I put the seal back in and I just went flush like I should have done the first time <sighs> anyway um, I did feel the engagement that you have with that seal is it you know kind of you just first put that spline in you feel the seal engage into the pilot on the yoke so I do think pretty confident as far as the seal goes that we're probably gonna be okay but if it does leak I'm gonna do an updated video on this so Here's in here's to end the story. This is what I want to basically say on this. This was my first uh, opinion, and it's not rocket science. It's really I know a lot of you guys have done this. You're gonna say, dude, what? Is, it's this is easy, and you're right. But it was my first one, so don't do what I did. What I should have done, I'm gonna tell you. I should have marked, I believe, the pinion and the nut where they were at. And I should have got a good feel, and that's entirely my fault. So I went back. I, I did watch several YouTube videos, and one of them was a company, like I said before, TRQ. Went over that sequence again, but you know, I'm just sharing what I did. I don't want this video to to be, hey, do what I did. So um, a lot of what I do on this channel is to, I want to show the mistakes and things I've learned. So. Let's just see how it goes. But like I said, so far, so good. She's full. And uh, we're going to see what happens. Hopefully, this will be the last time I have to take that yoke off. This car is going to have to have that rear main seal uh, replaced. But that's for another day. So this is the end of the, of the pinion seal replacement video for us. And I hope everybody has a great day. Thanks.